Here's how to use the ESP32 CAM module to take long duration time lapse movies. The code I show here will save a sequence of still images to a micro SD card, then sleep the device between shots. I've also modified the code to avoid the notorious green tints that can be a major issue when using the CAM module for time lapse photography. Later in the video, I'll run through some of the other issues I encountered while trying to use the CAM module for time lapse photography. If you want my code, there's a link in the description below. So, to make a time lapse movie, we basically need the CAM module to take a series of still images and then name them consecutively. We could just use a variable to keep track of the image number. However, this isn't very useful for long duration time lapse photography because the device could run out of power. What we can do is to sleep the CAM module between shots, but then we can't use a regular variable since it will reset when the device wakes up again. So we need a way to store the image number and retrieve it again when the device wakes up. To do this we can use the EEPROM library. So I'll now walk through the code I've made for this. And the first thing we need to do is to include the EEPROM library. I think it's EEPROM not EEPROM. So we do that by including EEPROMH. We'll need one byte for storage. So we define that here. Then I set the photo number as zero. So in the setup routine, as the device is being set up, we do eprom.begin and the eprom size in bytes, and then we read the first entry in the eprom memory. So the eprom is a part of the ESP32 CAM. I should just mention that you can only write to it about 100,000 times per device, and then it may stop working. This is something to be wary of if you're using a device for a long time period. So note that the EEPROM might burn itself out eventually. So the photo number is retrieved from the EEPROM. I'll scroll down to the picture taking routine. There's a bit more code here, I'll explain the rest of it later. So basically, after we take a photo successfully, it will increment the photo number here. And because we're only storing one byte, then if it's over 255, it will reset it to zero. So that's something to be aware of. It will only take 255 photos and then the new photos will start overwriting the old ones. So we then call eprom.write and that saves onto the eprom device. Once you write to the eprom, remember to call the commit method afterwards. So that saves it. So after we've taken photo one, it will save one to the EEPROM and then we can sleep the device. That's what I'll get onto next. I should just mention there is a preferences library you can use. So if you include preferences.h, then there are methods that you can use to very conveniently save data to the EEPROM device instead of using this library, which is deprecated now. However, I could not get this library to work properly. I don't know if it's just the fault of the ESP32 CAM or something else going on. So you could try to use it. It's quite convenient and quite easy to use, but I just could not get it to save data and then read it back again. Hence, I'm doing the old school using the EEPROM library. So now we've handled the image numbering, how do we sleep the device between taking the photos? So the first thing I've done is to define the sleep time in microseconds. Here I've used one million and there are one million microseconds in one second. So you don't really need to use this number, it just makes the calculations a bit more straightforward. Because now we can put sleep time in seconds, which is a bit easier to understand. So then it will calculate the actual sleep time in microseconds, which it uses internally. So if you come to use this code, you can of course change this to be any other value. So the sleeping is done after a photo is taken. So to sleep the ESP32 cam, you need to call this quite long named function, ESP underscore sleep underscore enable underscore timer underscore wake up. And you have to put in a variable which is the sleep time, and this is the one in microseconds. Do not forget to call this procedure ESP underscore deep underscore sleep underscore start. This is the function that actually puts the device to sleep. 
I should just mention there are various other ways to wake it up again, but here we are using the timer. You could in theory use motion detection or something else if you're making a security camera. So if you want to test my code, then it's a good idea to use the serial port to see what it's doing. So it will print a message when it's waking up again. And this is the standard configuration of the camera. So let's go and have a look at the picture taking code itself. The first thing I mention is that unlike my previous video on time lapse photography, we're not using the loop. We're actually just taking the photos in the setup routine itself. So once the camera is initialized, I put a function to reset the photo numbering. Now we come to the actual picture taking routines. So I put this in a function. And I don't know if you've noticed, but if you're taking photos with the ESP32 cam, then the first photo you take often or always seems to have a green tint to it, which is not very nice. So what I do here is I uh, take the photo and then don't save it. It has a parameter whether it should save it or not. So we put in false, that will take the photo and not actually save it. And the second picture we will save because that hopefully won't have the green tint. So after it's taken the photo, then it will just go to sleep and that's the code that I showed previously. So let's just have a look at the take photo function here. This is pretty standard code for the ESP32 for taking photos. I've just added a Boolean parameter here, save photo. So it will take the photo here. If save photo is false, then it returns. So the second time we call it, save photo will be true. So this won't be true and it will carry on and save the JPEG. If it has successfully saved the image, then it updates the photo number, saves the number to the EEPROM, and then it closes the camera and returns, and then the device will sleep. So that was a run through of the code. Hopefully you'll be able to get it running. If you get any problems, then do leave a comment below. Now let's have a look at some of the results. So this was my first one, and as you can see, there is a picture here which is just about visible but then all the rest are white. Initially I thought that this was due to there not being enough time between taking the photos because it does take time to sleep the device and then it does take a few seconds for the device to boot up again. So I just thought I was taking them every 30 seconds was too quick for the device. So then I took the photos every 120 seconds or every two minutes. So this looked better, but then I realized that actually my photos were just overexposed. So I just mentioned that this is probably the biggest problem you'll face if you're doing a time-lapse photography where the lighting isn't controlled. So for example, you want to take photos of a sunset or a sunrise just take a photo in your garden or something. So as you can see with this one, this one it's a bit overexposed. The sun was quite bright. I think it was uh, sunset here. So it's very, very light here. But later in the evening, the pictures get a bit better. Although unfortunately also my window was steaming up because it's uh, cold. So the condensation kind of ruins this one. And this one you can see the vehicle lights, although obviously the exposure time is quite long, so they're slightly blurred. And then we don't really get anything because the exposure wasn't really long enough. So this is a particular problem. You could probably attach a light meter or something if you wanted to like increase the exposure if the light is darker, but that would be really quite complicated. I should just mention in the code that there are some lines here around line 90 onwards where you can change the brightness, contrast, saturation, white balance mode, and there's also some special effects where you can put a tint on the images. For time-lapse photography, I'd say the most important one is to set the brightness. Here I set the brightness to minus one, which seemed to work reasonably well for mine. So here's the results of my first very long time-lapse test. I took photos for every 90 seconds over the duration of about four or five hours. So as you can see, it has worked reasonably well, although I just realized that the photos don't take very well at night. 
So I guess the take home message of this is that the ESP32 cam is not terribly good at taking photos where you can't really control the lighting. In the corner now you can see the previous time lapse photography I took in my mini photo studio and as you can see it worked a lot better. I still don't know why the camera doesn't focus well sometimes. I'd say it is worthwhile buying a few different lenses and experimenting with them. This one takes much better photos although it is a wide angle one. So I hope you have fun trying to test this code and making your own time lapse photos. If you have any comments or suggestions then do leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.